Just talk a minute about the app. So there's an app for Android and there's an app for iOS. And they're both quite different. The app for Android is older and more limiting. So this is the app for Android. Um, if you hit start aerial photography, it gets you into your main view. Click the little eye to get it all set up. Let me just go back. Hit start aerial photography, that will take you into the, the actual app itself. The black screen, now you can't see anything because that's normally where you get the camera view. Down here is a map, and then up at the top you have all of your telemetry. And the color-coded bar is your, is your battery. Um, over on this side is where you can switch between camera movie. So it's a little bit inintuitive. Right now it's in camera mode. And then you have to hit the little button down here again to now you're in video mode. So even though it shows a camera, this is video mode. So when you got a red button, you're in movie. And when you have the little weird shutter icon, you're in camera. Up here is where you can change your modes between follow me and shoot. So follow me is where it can follow the transmitter. Or it either follows the transmitter or it follows the GPS in your phone. I'm not entirely sure. So, and then you can have it self-circle around you or follow you. So it does have some cool features like that. Um, and that's pretty much it for the, for the Android app. There's more settings. You can get in and control the quality of the camera and the, and the FPV view and stuff like that. But uh, I'm not going to get into that. I just wanted to show some of the differences between Android and Apple. So now here's the new Apple app. And this one just updated April 2016. And now when you log in, it's a vertical orientation and there's social features. So it's all about sharing what you've taken with your drone. You know, it's, all, it's got videos and pictures and you, it has like a social network built in. As well as there's some weird sharing features where you get coins for how many times you sign into the app and you can... The, more, the market doesn't seem to be open yet, but... Um, and then you can go into equipment management and control your device. Um, add another drone because they're going to have more coming out soon and uh, the photos and stuff which I've recently deleted so they're all gone now getting into the app itself uh, start aero photography then you switch it to landscape mode because now it's going to be attached into your transmitter and it's a similar setup where you have the the map your FPV view, all of your telemetry information up top so it shows you what Wi-Fi you're on, how many GPS signals you have what mode you're in on the transmitter, one, two, or three, your battery status of your quad of your quadcopter, um, how far away, how fast you're going, uh, how f oh this one's this one's distance from home, this one's height from takeoff, uh, and then this one's your transmitter battery. Um, switching between camera and video is the same on this app. It's not letting me do it probably because we're not connected to the drone. Now, the difference here is that you have more modes. So you have your snap, you have follow me, which is follow the transmitter. But the new one is, and unique to iOS, Apple stuff, is follow snap. Follow snap is object recognition, where you can drag a box around an object, and it will optically, from the camera on the drone, it will opti optically find it and try and track it. It's a little buggy, it's a little gimmicky, it doesn't work on small objects. I've actually not had this work well yet, but I've only tried on a small RC vehicle, just trying to get it to automatically track it, and it didn't work. So, um, yes, you have more you have more modes on, I, on Apple stuff than you do on Android, and the app is newer. That's something to be aware of. Now, uh, one con about the, the quadcopter is that there is no physical camera button, no physical record button on the transmitter. So you have to, you have to use an app. You, you have to have either an Android smartphone or an Apple smartphone. And uh, that's the only way that you can see how much battery is in the quad, how far away you've gone, how high you've gone. It's, I mean, it's hugely beneficial to run the application. Uh, as well as it's the only way to control it, to control a camera. So you have to have an app to be able to turn on the camera, to take a picture, take a video, etc. But, um, you know, that is similar to 
Phantom as well, although I think on a Phantom you have dedicated camera buttons on the controller itself. I wish that there had been a camera button. Every now and then I don't want to put an app on, or I just want to go and fly, and it would be nice if I could just go grab this stuff, go fly, and hit a button and take a picture. Nah, that will probably be an Explorer 2. Um, you know, this is a first generation product, but they've done a heck of a job with it. It's really, really, really good. And um, I'm gushing over it a little bit, but it does have its limitations. Um, some of the cons are the, the limited range. You know, you're not going to be able to fly as far away as a Phantom. Uh, one of the more advanced Phantoms anyway with Lightbridge. But for the price of it, which, uh, you know, the price varies, but it's gone on sale a couple times. And it's very, very competitively priced. Uh, oh, one of the other little cons that I have is with the camera. Uh, the camera itself, being a 1080p native camera, it takes really, really nice, sharp video. Um, the photo quality seems to be eh, not, eh, it's okay, but it's not mind-blowing. I really like the video on it. Uh, its field of view is a little bit too wide angle for my liking. I think it's a 140 degree field of view, which is very wide angle. That's like, that's like Go GoPro style, right? Um, so for getting cinematic shots, it's a little bit disorienting. It's nice to have the, the more flat field of view where you don't get the distortion. That's the word I was looking for before is you don't get the wide angle distortion. All right. So I've uh, talked about this thing a lot and uh, I really like it. And um, yeah, go get yourself a bag. Amazon Basics DSLR backpack.